All right, let's talk about Substance Painter performance and how it relates to the hardware we're going to be using. Uh, so right now, if I go to my... You can hit Control shift escape in a Windows machine, and you can bring up your Task Manager. So I'm on the AMD Ryzen 3970X. And if you go to my YouTube channel and type in Workstation, you'll get a little bit more information about the ecosystem, the motherboard, uh, PCIe 4, all that good stuff, What will all the component pieces in, in the PC I'm using right now. And then down here under the GPU, we're using the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. And that's relevant because if we go over here to Edit Settings and we scroll down, so you're at the very top here, you're going to want to scroll down. Under the Baking Options, you're going to want to make sure that Enable GPU Ray Tracing is turned on, especially if you're using any of the NVIDIA cards with uh, RTX capabilities. And if you keep scrolling down, you're going to see the iRay hardware. Uh, it's going to utilize our CPU and our GPU in here, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but basically, when we're baking, and even the little stuff, like when we're rotating in our, our scene here and the brush response time, it's going to be tied very closely to your GPU performance in Substance Painter. So if we go here to Texture Settings, we go to bash, Bake Mesh Maps. We're going to go ahead and keep this at 4096. Uh, we have our skull selected. That's fine. And you're going to see we're baking our normal world space, normal ID, ambient occlusion, curvature position, and thickness maps. And if you go digging through their documentation, this is a Substance Magazine where they come out every once in a while. Uh, and you're going to see uh, ambient occlusion maps are baking up to 193 times faster. Thickness maps bake super duper fast. So while we're baking those maps and the specific maps we're talking about here, if you go into the perform performance and optimizations, these are actually... Uh, th these have some conflicting information here. So you're going to see the optics GPU ray tracing ability in their baker, uh, AO, bent normals, curvature, thickness, and also underneath the GPU ray tracing section under substance bakers. I don't know if that's different than uh, here's substance designer. Here's the substance bakers. But it looks like uh, ambient occlusion, bent normals, curvature, position, thickness, and world space normals. And it'll be obvious when you're baking in here, uh, the ones that are utilizing the GPU ray tracing are going to go much, much faster. So we'll see that in just a second. If you go into the technical requirements here, you're going to see that the NVIDIA iRay renderer itself requires CUDA drivers. So if you're in here and you're in the GPU section and you don't notice, I think this is set to 3D or something by default, or maybe copy, uh, go down here to CUDA and you'll see the CUDA cores kick in on your performance if you want to look at that. So anyways, we'll go through here and again, we're going to be baking our maps. So we're going to go ahead and say bake skull mesh maps. And right now, the normal map is probably going to take the longest. You're going to see it's uh, hitting one of my CPU cores. And this is actually OK. Uh, whenever it goes into that kind of, you know, it's not going to distribute that workload very efficiently. Uh, it'll still be able to go into boost mode. So it's still, you know, 4.15, 4.25 gigahertz process there. So now our normal's done. You're going to see the world space normal, normal's going to kick in, done. Material ID is not in our list here, so that's going to take a little bit longer. And now that that's done, got our ambient occlusion, and boom, it's done. So ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness, all GPU accelerated. These are going to happen real quick, and you're going to see uh, this is going to spike a little bit as it's starting to utilize that hardware to get that stuff done. And we're done. Go ahead and hit OK, and let's go ahead and open up a demo file, and we'll hop into iRay. So here we are, all set up here. And actually, let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, there's another uh, video on this, but we're going to go ahead and go into the iris material. And underneath the shader, we're going to cr over crank that intensity so those eyes really light up. And then we're going to hop into iRay just by clicking this little camera icon. And this one, if you remember, we were in edit mode or edit settings, and we have the CPU and GPU uh, initialized here. Let's go down here, and we're going to go ahead and turn off uh, underneath the camera here, the aperture. Go ahead and turn that down to zero. It depth of field's cool, and uh, we can definitely do that. Uh, but I just want to see this thing fully sharp. So as we're uh, moving this around, you're going to see it's going to get kind of fuzzy, and then it's going to start getting a little bit more refined. And if we go in here, to our render settings, we can say we have our max samples and our min samples and our max time cranked up. So it's just going to sit there uh, and continue to refine this render the, long, the longer that it sits. Uh, when we go over here, you're going to see it's really kicking in those CUDA cores. And that's what the uh, settings and, and those technical requirements when you're using iRay. You're going to need those CUDA cores in order to render. And you'll also see the CPU is also getting pretty taxed. So it's actually using both uh, these to, do, to deliver a very, very quick uh, render, which is nice.